Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. Listen, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do not forget to click the subscribe button. And after you click that button, you just got one more job, and that is to click the bell. It will notify you every time we upload a video. Listen, I pray that you guys are doing well. I pray that all is going well in your lives. Uh, Before we get into our meal, I just wanted to say, keep my family in prayer, keep my daughter in prayer and her family. Uh, My daughter's mom passed away a few days ago uh, from COVID. Uh, She had some, some underlying issues in her body. And unfortunately, it was just really hard to fight it off. She was only 42 years old. Um, so it definitely was a shock to everyone. Definitely was unexpected. Um, we're definitely all hurting, you know, um, her husband, my daughter, uh, her, my daughter's sister, you know, her brothers, just everybody, my wife, just everybody, my mom, her whole, her whole entire family, you know, it just was a shock to all of us and and really heavy on our hearts. So just keep everyone in prayer, especially everyone um, on her side of the family. Uh, we surely would appreciate it. But listen, the meal is set. Uh, it smells great. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Listen, I just want to share a couple of scriptures with you. I know that it's just so much going on in in many of our lives, um, especially, you know, with what I just talked about with everything going on with COVID. And and right now, you know, we have an uptick in in people getting sick, like a a very high uptick. I know many, many people that are sick right now. Uh, Some people are going through financially. Some people are dealing with the loss of loved ones and the loss of, of, you know, so many different things, property. You know, I'm just hearing just so many different stories of people just going through on so many different levels and so many different sides. So I just wanted to share a couple of scriptures with you um, and prayerfully it will encourage you um, because, you know, how many know the times that we're in, you know, you just we're just going to constantly see something you know, one unexpected thing after another. That's not something that we pray for. We just pray that the Lord has mercy and that, you know, he keeps us in these situations and helps us to keep our faith. You know, just like with the the loss of my daughter's mother definitely was unexpected. You know, we just was trusting on the Lord to just have his way and and, and heal her, but it didn't go that way. So, you know, in that, you know, you want to be able to stand strong on your faith, in whatever situation you're dealing with. And we just truly, once again, appreciate her. She was a beautiful person, you know, um, give you the shirt off her back, you know, help anybody, you know, so she's definitely going to truly be missed. So once again, just keep everyone in prayer. But first Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verses four through eight says, charity suffereth long and is kind. And that word charity there is love for those of you that don't know. Charity envy if not. Chariot, charity, excuse me, vaunt if not itself is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly. So it's just letting us know the different things that love is and that it isn't. How I many you know we know that it is kind, it suffers long, it doesn't envy anybody, you know, it's not puffed up, you know, it does not behave itself unseemly, seek if not her own, is not easily provoked, think if no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. And how many know? We know that the scripture says that that love is God and that God is love. And we know that God never fails us. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So these scriptures are letting us know that, listen, love, that you know, you got faith, you got hope, but love is the most important thing that we can have. And I wanted to encourage you guys that in this day and time, there's so many things that's trying to eat against, you know, the love that we have 
you know, for our family, for our friends, for ourselves. You know, that's why when you look at the scriptures and they talk about the end times, it says the love of many is going to wax cold. So the devil was trying to get people in a place where their, their you know, their fuses is short. The love isn't there. You know, I heard somebody talking recently about how divorces even went higher, you know, people were just walking in separate ways, turning their backs on each other, you know? So I wanted to encourage you guys that listen, you know, love hard, you know, and we know that God is love. So first and foremost, we have to trust in him and keep our faith in him in order to truly love properly, properly. You can't really truly love properly if you don't have God in your life anyway, or if you don't know God, because how many know God helps us to see beyond the way we think and beyond the way things look, because sometimes when we can, when we look at things through our lens and we don't have an understanding of what's going on, it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to give up. It's easy to walk away. But when we look at those things through the lens of God, when we are abiding in the Lord Jesus, how many know we could see those things in its proper light? And even if it's a struggle for us, we have God there to hold us, to keep us, to lead us, to guide us, to help us to understand, you know, what it is that we're going through and why we are going through it. Colossians 4 and 2 says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So it says, listen, continue in prayer, but as you are praying, watch, pay attention to what's going on around you. Make sure you're also paying attention to the things that God is trying to reveal to you. Because when we pray, we're asking God, lead us, guide us, do this and that, Lord. So when the Lord is trying to reveal something to you, we can't be ignorant to that. We have to keep our spiritual eyes open. We have to always be on, on attention, you know, to what's going on around us. And as we're doing that, we should be doing all of this with thanksgiving. Psalm 118 and 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. So there it is again. We should be giving thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good because his mercy endureth forever. Last scripture I want to share with you guys. First Peter 4, 7 through 8. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. And how many know if you are looking through your spiritual eyes, if you are letting God speak to you and lead you and guide you, you see that the end of all things truly is at hand. But listen what the scripture says, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And a lot of times when we see that word sober in the Bible, the first thing we think about is not drinking. And that's one side of it. But it's not only talking about not drinking or not being drunk, but it's talking about being on point, you know, being focused, just like we talked about in Colossians 4 and 2, continuing in prayer and watching, being focused, being on point, sober and watch unto prayer. You know, there it is right there again. And verse 8 says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So it's saying like those of us that are believers, you know, have a fervent charity, especially among ourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. And obviously the scripture is not telling us not to love those that are outside of the body, but it is saying that, you know, we really truly should be loving one another, especially those of us that are in the household of the Lord. But I wanted to read these scriptures and I wanted to encourage you guys to pray love and be thankful. When we look at that first Peter four and seven, it says, but the end of all things is at hand. And I think, and I had a, and I had a talk with a friend of mine yesterday. Um, and I was saying to her how, you know, I've been in the church, you know, like a, a church itself for like 21 years now. I had been going to church back and forth once in a while with my mother when I was young and my aunt. And one thing I noticed about being around the church and now in the church for a long period of time, it just seems like a lot of the messages that were going out there, and it wasn't from everyone, but from a lot of churches, it was get ready to have this. You're going to have that. God wants you blessed and this and that. And not saying that some of those things weren't true, because I don't think all of them were. Some people, they were just prophesying out of their belly. Some people, they may have had good intentions. They were prophesying, just trying to encourage people that were down and out, didn't have much. But that's not what God asked us to do. He asked us to just share his word and let the chips fall where they may. He wants people to believe in his word, not in prophecies that's coming out of us and out of our belly. But as me and my friend were talking, 
I was just telling her how, you know, a lot of the messages that we heard up until this point was those types of messages. We didn't give both sides of the scripture. We didn't talk about those down times. And, j- and just because we talk about down times that happened in the Bible or something that somebody went through that was hard, that's not talking negative. That's not talking non-faith. That's just a reality that trials and tribulations are going to come. So when you see things hit like this virus, when it hit a couple years ago, look how many people question God. Look how many people, you know, walked away from God. They no longer have the faith that they used to have. They're there's some people that when the church doors open, they never even came back to church. Why? Because they were constantly getting the information or getting the messages that, you know, God wants everything to be well. And, you know, you know, you can be blessed and, and nothing ever happened to you. And, you know, and that's just not true. The, the fact of the matter is the scripture says that the world is passing away. So when we see all of these things like viruses and these storms and all of the killing that's going on just in the United States alone, when we see all of these different things happening, you know, if somebody had been honest with us and told us that, listen, God, yes, he, 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 he wants you blessed, especially when those of us that are saved, he's going to bless you. He's going to take care of your needs and all of that. But the world around you will continue to die. And that's just a reality. And it is important that in the midst of a dying world, yes, have a good time. Enjoy yourself in the Lord. I'm always doing something with my wife and my kids and just trying to enjoy ourselves and have a good time, movie time, family time, travel time, whatever. We're constantly doing something, you know, uh, Bible time, praying time. I mean, you know, we're having a good time, but not being ignorant to what's going on around us. Because when you start to be ignorant to what's going on around you and you just listen to these people that's constantly telling you all these sweet nothings, when things like this happen, when stuff like COVID hit and all these things happen, you know, all of a sudden we want to blame God. We want to make like God, you know, he should have just kept everything perfect, but God is constantly telling us, listen, this world is passing away. And that's why it is important that we pray, that we love and we be thankful wherever you are in your life. Be content. Be thankful. That does not being content does not mean that you can't have more or that God won't increase where you are. But being content is at least saying to God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for at least me having this and me being in this place, you know, praying, constantly communing with the Lord, asking him to help us to love one another and love those in the world enough to give them the truth, to tell them about Christ. Like, That's what's most important, guys, because I'm telling you, if we don't do these three things and stay focused, the enemy is going to deceive us. He's going to 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 cause us to be bitter, to be upset, to feel like, you know, this isn't the life, you know, uh, you know, my life shouldn't be going this way or this shouldn't be happening. But at the end of the day, God always has everything under control And it is always going according to his will, whether you believe that or not, when it's all said and done, God's people will be saved and those that were not meant to be saved won't be saved. That's just a fact. So if you belong to the Lord, stay on his side. If you don't know the Lord, the scriptures is clear. Romans 10 and 9, that if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And when you make that declaration, the Lord will come into your life. He will help you to get through uh, the trials and tribulations. He will put you in the right place, place you among the right people that will help you to get to the place where you need to be in him and to do the work that he has called you to do. So just be encouraged, guys. Know that I love you. I always want to just give to you guys from my heart. And I always want to be honest with you. I don't ever want to be a preacher that comes up here and just tell you sweet nothings and lie to you and make you think that everything is just going to be peaches and cream. But if you live long enough, you should already know that is not the case. If you've been saved long enough, you should already know that is not the case. But one thing that does not change, and that is the Lord Jesus. He is the same today tomorrow and forevermore. But know that I love you guys. Once again, keep our family in prayer. Keep my daughter in prayer and her siblings and her mom's husband, Ro. Just keep all of them in prayer. We sure would appreciate it, guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, shalom.